Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist titled Ever Wonder Why? In the last video, we talked about why pneumonia can lead to abdominal pain, not just chest pain, but abdominal pain. We also discussed why pregnant women get the mask of pregnancy. What's the mechanism behind it? As for today, we'll talk about why dilutional hyponatremia actually exists, but there is no such thing as dilutional hypokalemia. Why not? Aren't they both electrolytes? Yes, they are. Aren't they both cations? Yes. Aren't they both monovalent, belonging to the same group in the periodic table? Yes. Then why would overhydration dilute my serum sodium, but not my serum potassium? Before we start, it's your daily reminder that sodium disorders cause CNS problems, but calcium problems will give me cardiac issues like arrhythmias. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. And if you have watched my fix principle video in my physiology playlist, you will recall that amount equals volume times concentration. If I told you that you have 3 liters of water, each liter contains 2 grams of sodium. Now what's the amount of sodium in the entire 3 liters? The answer is 6 of course. How did you do it? 3 times 2. Amount equals volume times concentration. Therefore, concentration equals amount over volume. So when I say that my serum sodium concentration is about 140 milli equivalents, that's the amount over liters, this is the volume. And what's the 140? It's the concentration. Concentration equals amount over volume. That's the FIC principle. Which means if I am overhydrating myself, drinking too much water like crazy, what's going to happen to the volume? It will go up. What's going to happen to the concentration? It has to go down. What do you call that? Dilutional hyponatremia. Everyone understand this. But why does this not exist for potassium? It's not that it does not exist, it's that for the most part, it's not clinically relevant whatsoever. Let me explain. What's the normal reference range for your serum sodium concentration? It's between 135 and 145 milli equivalents per liter. How about that for potassium? 3.5 to 5. Because sodium is more abundant in the extracellular fluid, while potassium is more abundant in the intracellular, so you'll find less of it in the extracellular. Sodium is more in the ACF, potassium is more in the ICF. Let's take the average here. The average here is about 140. That's the serum sodium concentration. What's the average serum potassium concentration? It's about 4. Okay, fair enough. Now let's dilute each number by about 10% because I drank lots of water, so I diluted both by 10%. Fair enough. What's the 10% of 140, please? It's about 14 milli equivalents per liter. How about that for potassium? Well, 10% times 4 is 0 0.4. Let's dilute it, which means we will decrease the concentration of sodium by 14. It becometh 126 milli equivalents per liter. Is this hyponatremia? Yes, 126 is way lower than 135. So yes, this patient has true hyponatremia. Can this patient suffer symptoms? Of course. Sodium problems equal CNS problems. Dizziness, drowsiness, disorientation, obtundedness, and even coma. Collectively known as altered mental status. But how about this person? Dilute the potassium by 10%, what do you get? 3.6. Is this hypokalemia? No, 3.6 is still within the normal reference range. So this patient is not hypokalemic. This patient will not suffer symptom. That's why you will read in the textbook about dilutional hyponatremia, but you will never read of dilutional hypokalemia. It is extremely unlikely. And now you know why, something that your woke professor will never tell you. I want you to be a good clinician, not another doofus with a stethoscope. To learn more about potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, phosphate, etc., download my electrolytes course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. It will also teach you about the differences among hypovolemic hyponatremia, euvolemic hyponatremia, and hypervolemic hyponatremia. To learn more about the serum anion gap, the serum osmolar gap, the urine anion gap, the stool osmolar gap, base excess, base deficit, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis, normal 
anion gap, metabolic acidosis, etc. Download my acid base imbalance course, the best on the planet, at metacosisperfectionalist.com. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button, get you a membership at the highest tier to enjoy instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.